Good morning, church. Let's stand and do some singing together, y'all. Good morning. Welcome to Foothills United Methodist Church. We're so happy to have you here with us in person and online as we worship together this morning. We are celebrating God's creation this morning. And so one way that we're doing that is we have an earth care group. And they are sponsoring our coffee hour today, our fellowship on the patio so if you love God's creation, as we all do, right, then uh, you feel called to, to do this important work, to care for God's creation, that I invite you to stop by and see what Earth Care does as a ministry with our, uh, with our church. So they are also having the sustainability swap where there are different items that you could uh, bring to swap. One thing in particular they were thinking of, of all those puzzles that we worked during the pandemic that are just sitting there now, that you could bring those and swap them. And so, um, so they, we have tables uh, out there for that. Now, don't worry if you forgot to bring your different items to swap. Never fear. There are all of those things out there need a new home today. So if you uh, want to go by and see something that you can just give a new home, we encourage you to do that. Now, because we are celebrating God's creation, I also want to just take a moment to invite you uh, to meander up the stairs up towards the youth center at the beautiful Peace Garden that Sharon Russo and Chris Buckle have worked very hard to resurrect. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> In this Easter season where we celebrate resurrection, it, there are things blooming up there, bearing fruit, and it's a beautiful, peaceful place uh, for you to enjoy. So we invite you to check that out sometime. 
Another opportunity that I'd like to share with you this week uh, is a grief group that we are beginning on Thursday, the 28th at 10 o'clock. It will be in person. Um, we've had a couple of rough years, and so if you are grieving, this is a new group that they will study the book, Understanding Your Grief. Uh, it is a 10-week study, um, and they will uh, have a safe place to process your grief and learn how to uh, live with your grief because we don't just get over it. We live with it. So if you are interested in joining that group, you can call the church office or just show up on Thursday at 10 o'clock. One other opportunity, my favorite, my favorite all time, next Sunday, church council meeting. Woo! It really is. I play. But it really is a good time for us to come together and... Uh, in hybrid. This is our first hybrid meeting. So it, that means it'll be in person if you prefer or and or it's online through Zoom. So if you want to stay in uh, King Hall and be in person or if you'd like to run home and jump on the Zoom call at noon, you're welcome to do whatever you prefer. And we hope that you will be there because we're going to discuss what the post-pandemic church will look like and how to engage everyone to come back together. Now, we want to hear all the voices, so we invite you to, to join in on that discussion. Because what will the church look like post-COVID? Hopefully like this. <laughs> All right, so that is all the announcements that I have to share with you today. And so I invite you to stand as Witness continues leading us in worship.
As we give thanks to God for all of our opportunities and blessings, we come together and also lift up our prayers to God for our own needs and the needs of others in our congregation. So I invite you now to hear these requests for those in our extended family of faith. We uh, pray today for uh, Michelle Chabot on the loss of her husband, Bob, who has been in hospice care and passed away peacefully uh, last night. And I know that you will want to surround Michelle with your love and care and prayers this morning. We also pray for our member and staff colleague, Tish Weimer. Uh, she has been hospitalized this past week uh, battling a, an infection as she continues to go through new chemotherapy for her cancer. So keep Tish in your prayers and her husband, Ray, as well. We also pray each week for churches uh, that we're connected with, especially in the South District, and we pray for two that are in Santa Ana in Orange County today, El Hetsemani with uh, Davis Jaimes as the pastor, and then Santa Ana United Methodist Church, ADL DePano, and Kitalone Tuitupo are the pastors there. Let us gather our hearts together now and lift up our prayers to God as witness leads us in this time of centering. God of life and light, we give thanks to you in this Easter season for the power of resurrection through your Son, Jesus Christ. Even when we doubt that new life is possible, you show us in all its manifestation in your creation. And in this season of spring, we witness the cycles of life, of new birth and growth that are all around us. As we celebrate Earth Day, we are reminded that all of your creation is a gift from you. From the beginning of time, you have called us to be stewards of this gift. So may we be faithful to that call, O oh God, and reduce our negative impact on the climate. Let us act in ways that preserve your creation, not only for our use, but for generations to come from reducing our carbon output that leads to global warming to making sustainability a top priority in our daily lives. Healing God, there are so many in need of your care today. For all who are ill, struggling against disease, chronic health conditions, for all who hurt physically, mentally, and emotionally, we pray this day for their healing and their recovery to full health and wholeness. Comforty God, we hear the cries of those who have lost loved ones and now grieve their passing. We pray today especially for Michelle and for all who mourn their beloved, even as they now enter into new life with you. Loving God, help us to reach out with love and care to all who live in isolation, separated from family and friends. 
Help us to care for the poor who struggle for food and shelter and empower us to love our neighbors in their time of need as we would love ourselves. God of peace, we ask that you guide the world's leaders to seek peace and justice for all, especially for those directly affected by the war in Ukraine. Provide safe haven for those who flee the violence and be with those who are still trapped in it. And we pray for those who risk their lives to serve others and ask that you protect them in this dangerous time. God, we have our own cares and concerns that are upon our own hearts that we now lift up to you in this time of silence. O oh God, we are indeed an Easter people, followers of the risen Christ, who endeavor to follow his call to love you and to love one another. Guide us as the church to help us overcome our doubts. Bring us out of the valley of darkness and into the light of a new day, illuminated by your Son, Jesus our Lord, who taught us to pray, singing together. The first reading is Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. Wrapped in light as with a garment, you stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers fire and flame, your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they flee. At the sound of your thunder, they take to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass so that they may not again cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow beneath the hills, giving drink to every wild animal. The wild asses quench their thirst. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, your water, the mountains, the earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for the people to use to bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the human heart, 
oil to make the face shine, and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the Lord's are wandered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. In them the birds build their nests, the stork has its home in the fir trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats, the rocks are a refuge for the coonies. You have made the moon to mark the seasons, the sun knows its time for setting. You make darkness and it is night, when all the animals of the forest come creeping out. The young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they withdraw and lie down in their dens. People go out to their work and to labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things, both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you form to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. And from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of nails in his hands and put my fingers in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in which the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Last Sunday was a joyous celebration. If you were not able to worship with us for Easter, I invite you to watch it online or watch it again as I did this week because we had church last Sunday. Both services, but especially at 10.30, 
blew the roof off this sanctuary. And it should not have been any other way. Easter is a celebration that Christ is risen. And we rejoice in the hope Easter brings. Now the world may think Easter is over. The Easter baskets have been put away. The chocolate bunnies have been consumed. And the stores have moved on to marketing for the next holiday. But we know better. We know that Easter is not over. Easter is more than one day. It is a season, or really, a way of life. Easter makes us Easter people. Now, through the next six weeks, Pastor Greg and I will lead a sermon series called Easter People, where we'll explore what it means to be Easter people and how we live into the hope of the resurrection. The resurrection is not only a belief in our faith, but it certainly gives hope throughout our lives when we find ourselves in tombs of despair. Resurrection gives us freedom from the perils of this world, and resurrection is a call to action. I mean, there's a reason why we're resurrected into new life. Christ calls us to go where we haven't gone before, to rise to a new life, not just one day. And so we need a season to discern how to live into our calling as Easter people. There are Easter people in the scripture today. So let us explore this scripture to see what we can learn from them. Now, one interesting thing about these Easter people is that they begin as doubters. Are Easter people doubters? When we are caught up with the trumpets blaring and singing the hallelujah chorus on Easter morning, we sometimes think the Easter people at the tomb immediately believed that Christ had risen. They did not. In the scripture last week, the women arrived in mass at the tomb. And when the angels told them that Christ had, had risen, scripture doesn't say they believed it. They just witnessed the body was not there and were told that Christ had risen. The women went back to the house where the other disciples were and told them what had happened. And those disciples didn't believe it. They called it nonsense or an idle tale. Now, there are subtle differences in the details of the gospel accounts of the resurrection, but one consistent thread was that no one outright believed it. In fact, they were all consumed in fear. They were terrified when they encountered the angels. Mary Magdalene was afraid when she mistook Jesus as the gardener. And as we saw in the scripture passage that Teresa read today, the apostles had locked their doors out of fear. Our passage today tells us that they were afraid for their lives. They had just seen what could happen. What did happen to Jesus? And they didn't want it to happen to them too. So here they are, the first Easter people, and they are consumed with fear. Are Easter people fearful? Yes. 
The whole time the disciples were following Jesus, even before the crucifixion, they had doubts and questions. Is he really the Messiah? Is he really who he says he is? And what does he see in me? I'm just a fisherman, a tax collector, a woman. All of these doubts and questions come from a place of fear. They wrestled with the same questions we wrestle with. Did I make a mistake for giving up everything to follow him? What if I cannot withstand the persecution that will follow? Will I be able to do what he is calling me to do? Fear had to be the underlying cause of the betrayal, the denial, and the desertion at the cross. It is why they are hiding behind locked doors. But after the resurrection, Jesus enters their fear and brings peace. Locked doors could not keep Jesus out. He came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. This was a popular greeting for the time, like our hello. But the first words spoken to them by the risen Christ had to be more than hello. I mean, Jesus knew he would not have them at hello. They would need more to truly believe the resurrection. Jesus brings them peace for their fear. He brings them a calling. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. He brings them the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of forgiveness. Easter people are not immune from fear. But we have Christ's hope and peace to calm our fearful hearts. The disciples may have only wanted peace, but Jesus gives them so much more. They were so consumed with fear, they probably didn't know what they needed to help them believe. But Jesus did. Now Thomas, on the other hand, knows exactly what he needs. Now, Thomas was not present when Jesus appeared to the others, and so he continued to think the resurrection was nonsense. He probably thought they saw Jesus' spirit. You know, our eyes have a funny way of playing tricks on us, and we can see what we want to see. So Thomas knows that he needs more than just seeing He has to feel Jesus' wounds. He has to experience Jesus for himself. Thomas seems self-aware that he knows exactly what he needs. But this could also be read as giving Jesus a demand or perhaps bargaining with Jesus. The same kind of bargaining that maybe we have done. If you get me out of this mess, Jesus, I'll come to church every week. Unless Jesus saves me from this, I won't believe he's real. Do Easter people bargain with God or give demands to prove doubt? Do Easter people doubt? Yes. A week after the resurrection, all of the disciples were gathered again, including Thomas, behind shut doors. Not locked doors. So progress has been made. 
but the doors aren't quite open yet. He comes through the doors and stands among them and says, Peace be with you. Jesus always brings peace. He then extends Thomas an invitation to touch his wounds. Jesus offers to give him exactly what he thinks he needs to overcome his doubt. Yet Thomas doesn't touch him after all. He believes by seeing like the others. Jesus helps him to see things differently. It turns out that what Thomas thought he needed was not actually what he needed. Yet Jesus doesn't shame him for doubting or demanding. Jesus graciously invites him to reach out, to touch and see. Sometimes we think we know ourselves better than Jesus does. That we know what it will take in order to believe. Yet all of that goes out the window when we see with our own eyes the risen Christ. We see the first Easter people in this scripture And they probably don't look very much like the Easter people we envision. We might think Easter people have their lives together, have it all figured out, are filled with the Holy Spirit, and they just radiate resurrection power. Well, the apostles get there, but not at first. They are just like us. And our faith journeys, where there are times we are consumed with fear and doubt. The doors to our hearts are shut or even locked. But nothing can keep Jesus from reaching us. He walks through our doors and brings peace, forgiveness. And a calling. He breathes his spirit upon us. Jesus gives us what we need to move from fear and doubt to belief. For some of us, the trumpets from last Sunday and the alleluias may seem like a distant memory. That it has been a really long week to sit in disbelief and wait for Jesus. How do we live into this hope as Easter people when we are filled with fear and doubt? Fear and doubt are a normal part of being human. Fear and doubt are not the opposites of faith. They are part of the process of working out our faith. And we should not feel guilt or shame because we are all working out our faith on different timelines. Maybe it's time for you to move beyond the fear and doubt Maybe it's time to truly embrace the hope of the resurrection. Be honest and tell Christ what you need in this moment of your life. And then wait for Christ's invitation. And when it comes, may we all respond by seeing the risen Christ with new eyes and taking the first step into living out our call as Easter people. Amen.
as we enter, enter into our time of offering. This is the time when we respond to Christ's invitation in many different ways. We respond by giving our resources, our hearts, and our lives. So as witness leads us in this time of response, of uh, shifting sand, I invite you to listen and respond to Christ's invitation. believe all the lies so I can do the things I should despise and every day I am swayed by whatever is on my mind I hear it all depends on my faith so I'm feeling precarious the only problem I have with is there so mysterious and like a consumer I've been thinking if I could just get a bit more more than my 15 minutes of faith then I'd be So I stand on grace, stand on grace. I begged you for some proof for my Thomas eyes to see, slithering staff a leprous hand and lions resting lazily a glimpse of your backside glory and this soaked altar going ablaze but you know i've seen so much i explain So I stand on grace. Waters rose as my doubts reigned. My sandcastle faith, it slipped away. I found myself standing on your grace. It'd been there all the time. My faith is like shifting. And changed by every way. My faith is like shifting sand, so I stand on grace. My faith is like shifting sand, changed by every wave. My faith is like shifting sand. So I stand on grace, stand on grace. Thank you, Lori and Tim. That was beautiful. Please join me in prayer. Resurrected God, 
we admit that we allow ourselves to be swept up in fear and doubt. We question and ponder things that we'll never know the answers to on this side of heaven. We feel we need more to believe, but we don't know exactly what it is to help us believe. We trust that you know us better than we know ourselves and that you will bring us what we need. Help us to see you in new ways, in ways that show your resurrection still happens all around us. Help us to surrender our fear and doubt and lean in to your hope. We thank you for coming to us and bringing us peace, forgiveness, a calling as Easter people, and your spirit that enables us to be Easter people. We pray this prayer in your name. Amen. We invite you to stand as you are able for our last song. God is strong, forever God is with us, forever, forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever. Forever God is with us through the fear and the doubt. So as we leave this place, may Christ's peace and the hope of the resurrection go with you to fill all those places of fear and doubt. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. From the rising to the setting sun, His love endures forever. And by the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong. Forever God is with us forever. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong.